on divorce court today. When Adam moved in with three women, he expected fireworks and ended up with an explosion. He and Heaven have been together for nine years and still have issues with their old roommates, infidelity, and deceit. Adam Sanchez and Heaven Alexander have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Mr. Sanchez, you say when you met Ms. Alexander, you liked her, but you didn't think you had a chance with her. Why is that? Well, me and Heaven Alexander actually met back in 2005, and she's mm -hmm. a beautiful woman, so it was easy to fall in love with her, easy to be attracted by her. Mm -hmm. But when we first met, I didn't think I had a chance because she was actually bisexual, lesbian world mm -hmm. thing going on. So as a man, you don't really presume that you're gonna have that you relationship. Have a shot at exactly, it. Yeah, you know right. what I mean? You let her live her life, there's no judgment calls. But uh, I, I felt she was toying with me, telling me she liked me, and mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. But turn around, she actually did. Okay. You know what I mean? Ms. Alexander, is, is, is that an accurate recitation of, of the manner in which you met? It is. Um, I was experimenting, and mm -hmm. further along, at the time when I met him, I was going to go into being with men, mm -hmm. and I felt followed through with being with him, and that's where we landed, and he was very attractive, so I wanted to pursue him. Well, now, we're nine years and two children later. Yeah. You have two children, ages... Three and seven. Three and seven. What brings you here? Um, what I do believe is that we've had a lot of animosity and resentment built over the years. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things between the both of us that we need to go ahead and resolve and get closure on. Um, a lot of the bickering pettiness that comes upon uh, the arguments turn into bigger emotional mm -hmm. situations. And it just needs to be settled. You need somebody, that's why we're had to, glad to be here to talk to you about it. Because it's, it's a continuous cycle, Judge. It's like something from her leaving the microwave too high goes into some emotional breakdown later that happened five years prior to that. And we never get the issue resolved. Him is quick to say, let it go, let it go, let it go. And I don't feel that that's fixing anything. If we continuously let it go, we're just gonna sit here and be miserable. Well, walk me through an argument that started over something silly and, and, and escalated into some grand occasion. Okay, when we first met, um, when, when I first met, I was in the transition of moving from one home to another. Right. Back in 2005. As I indicated earlier, she was in her transition um, as far as her orientation. So she said, well, come stay with me. Now, how long did you know her? When she said, come stay Ooh, with me. Uh, that's a good question. It was only a, a matter of a month. Probably about a matter of a month, maybe Don't a few weeks. Don't make big decisions for small reasons. You're right. Do you know what I mean? You, when you impose yourself or implicate yourself into somebody else's living situation, just because, oh, I'm in between places, might, move, might as well move in with her, it usually doesn't work out very well. But go ahead. Obviously, yeah, you see, right. it continued. It, what it did, it, it worked out for us as far as a long-term having children, mm -hmm. but within our relationship and the structure and how we went into it, that's where we failed at, and mm -hmm. that's where it faltered. So I definitely agree. Yet at the same time, um, I was young, so there's no excuse. The whole thing, Your Honor, is that I met her. She was living with people who, at the time, the girl was an ex of hers. Mm -hmm. And the, an argument, as you indicated, would, it would be something that, in those times, that they would do in the way that they would communicate would spark probably a jealousy thing in me, mm -hmm. would be small. But then I would turn it in, or it would turn into something bigger that would make me feel very... Now, hold up, Mr. Sanchez. Could it be that you said, hmm, here's a pretty woman who likes another pretty woman. They're living in the same house. Wouldn't it be neat for me to move in there, too? Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, I'm red-handed. Slap on the wrist. It was, it was, I mean, it, it was surreal kind of like that, definitely. Surreal. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you know, um, but my intent was similar to the way that she presented it to me. We both were looking forward to move away from that chaos within our mm -hmm. lives. So it, we came in, hit the ground running. And there was things about her that I just didn't take the time out to understand. Right. And more or less, she never took the time out to understand about me. Okay, hang on. Mrs. Alexander, what, did, what do you have to say about the way the relationship started and how that impacted where you are today? Well, when the relationship started, it wasn't exactly how I planned it. And with him coming in and being so attractive, you know, I didn't expect things to go the way that they did so fast, so soon. And when I approached him with the interest that I wanted to be with him, it was more so, it was being 
overlooked at the things that I was previously doing before he got there. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, being girlfriends with my girlfriend and, you know... But girlfriends don't kiss... Do you kiss your best friends on the lips? Well, let's not go there. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, and, and... Ms. Alexander, let me... Did you not assume that having had a romantic relationship with anyone, male or female, and then moving a new romantic interest in to live with you and that old romantic interest, didn't that, that dawn on you it might be a bit of a problem? Yes, it, it, it did, but I didn't think it would be because it wasn't that serious, and it was very short. So when he came into the picture, I believe that, you know, she could sit down and do whatever she was going to do while I pursue him. You hear the way she said that? Do what she was going to do. Yeah, I don't know what she was going to do. I didn't either. <laughs> uh... But what she did do was, was be very, very, you know what I mean? It was, in, in a lack of better words, it was probably volatile towards a relationship. It was like her and I were trying to build a bond, and this when other person... When you say volatile, volatile, like she didn't what care. do you mean? She didn't care. She did things, you know what I mean? Flirted with her in front of me, became very, you know what I mean? It, it, it assumed as... If flirted the, with the ex-girlfriend in front of you. Yes. It, it, well, not her. The ex-girlfriend flirted with her, but mm -hmm. she kind of liked the attention. You get what I mean? It was, was like a woman it. loving the attention. And it, and it was it was presented to me like, ah, oh, you're being jealous. Ah, oh, don't be insecure. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, it's building into insecurity simply because I'm trying to build a relationship so you, with her. So you, you, you were rocking back in between two people liking you and you kind of enjoyed it. Every, anybody would. Don't, yeah, don't lie. Don't yes, lie. Yes, Judge, I, I did. However, it's not exactly what he's saying. Conversation, regular conversation for me and her would be me flirting with her. And it wasn't the case. And so I have to deal with that back and forth and that's caused a rift in our relationship. Next, how did a Valentine's Day present from heaven turn into a problem for this couple? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Real people, real conflict, real judgments. Divorce Court continues. Mr. Sanchez, you specifically say in your papers that Mrs. Alexander doesn't understand the concept of money. What do you mean by that, that she doesn't understand the concept of money? Recently, this past um, Valentine's Day. Yes. This past Valentine's Day, she went out and bought me something for Valentine's Day, considering she was the only one working and I was at home with the children. So mm -hmm. she had the funding to do so, you know what I mean? But we've always made a bond and a connection with, it, with each other to understand that if we're going to consider it our money because our financial sat uh, status is, mm -hmm. it's going to be ours. We're going to discuss it. When she got the job, the initial was, this is my money. I do what I want with it. And that changed. That was one thing. And she would completely disagree with me if mm -hmm. I did that on my mm -hmm. end. Another thing was that she went out and bought things. And when mm -hmm. she bought it, I appreciated it because it was Valentine's Day. The gesture is our relationship. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yet she bought other things for other people. And I wanted her to not buy anything because at the time we needed the money for particular reasons. To say. So you, you say that she just spends her money frivolously. Yes. And without regard to the budget that you happen to be on. Right. It, Are you good with money, Ms. Alexander? Yes, I am, Your Honor. He d spends money frivolously. He, he doesn't know how to save. He doesn't know how to budget. And we've been through that plenty of occasions. Um, he doesn't put the money in the direct, the direct places where it needs to go, where it's most important. He wants to buy it on clothes. He wants to, you know, spend it on partying and drinking and so have you. And I don't understand how I'm the one who can't manage money when it's clearly anytime he has the money within his hands... It goes for him. It goes... I don't know. Sometimes uh, it goes for him. Sometimes I don't know where it is. Can I interject with that? Yeah, go right ahead, sir. Okay, so she's indicating that when I have money, I spend it, or whether she said, I don't know where it goes. The whole fact of the matter is, is that whenever I give money to her, she always comes to me at the end of the day, is like, I still have the money you gave me. And it's like, yeah, because everything that we've been buying, I've been spending. So that's why it looks like I'm frivolous with money because you're asking for this, this, that, and the third. We need this, this, that, and the third, and you don't have to go in your pocket. So at the end of the week or at the end of the month, that's when she's like, true. I still have this amount of money, how did you spend all that money? Because I was the only one buying anything. You want to drink and party? Okay. We're going to have to do it together because we're together, and that's I where gotcha. the money... I got gotcha. you. Ms. Alexander, you say you really can't be yourself when you're around Mr. Sanchez. What does that mean? 
Well, I can't be myself for one because Adam, Mr. Sanchez, always wants to put me in a place where either I'm either doing too much, too little, or uh, in in between somewhere. And when we are in certain situations, I have to um, sit back and hold my tongue and hold my emotions. You guys are gonna have to tell me a story. You guys tell me conclusions. He's doing this, he's doing that, he's making me feel this way. Give me a story so I can make a That's conclusion. Okay. Um, take story. your time, take your time. Okay. But, uh, I, my, my train of thought. You, you, you want me to come back yes, to you in, in a second? <laughs> Mr. Sanchez, do you know what I'm talking about? Well, the story and what the... Yeah, one thing, one thing really is that um, I, I, heaven, with a considerable scenario that she's talking about, she said I always put her in a place, she always mm -hmm. hold her somewhere. It, she's a very self-centered person mm -hmm. at times. She can be very self-worthy and it's about, not about just self-preservation, it's mm -hmm. simply just about me. Mm -hmm. So this time last year, she was continuously going out on weekends with the person that we had originally moved in when we met. Mm -hmm. And would never consider the time that we could spend. I'm watching the child, the woman that she's out with, I'm watching her child plus my two children at home. I'm at home by myself with them and she's going weekend after weekend without, and she's like, I need this, I need this. Considering she was young, she's been with me since she was 19, didn't really get an opportunity mm -hmm. to grow into a young woman, I understood it trying to be her man. Right. But it got to the point where she wasn't even considering how I feel. She didn't turn it around and say, hey, girl, can you watch my children my, while I so go out my, with my, my man? So my man and I can go out together. And she didn't Ms. do that. Ms. Alexander, is there any truth to that? Yes, there is. Uh -huh. And I didn't, I didn't consider that because I wanted to go out. I wanted to have some oh, alone God. time. I wanted to get away. And but why not with me? It, because of the arguments and back and forth, I just didn't want to spend mm -hmm. that kind of time with him. I got it. I got it. I got it. When Divorce Court continues, is Adam's attitude about intimacy ruining his relationship with Evan? Do you think this couple can stop arguing and catch up their relationship? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now, 1-800-282-1991. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Alexander, you say that you did have a girlfriend come over once and your and Mr. Sanchez did in fact hit on her. Yes, Your Honor, he did. Adam is not as innocent as he may seem. He um, basically she came to stay with us just for a little while. And the, when we got back to the house the whole time, they're flirting. And this is like so inappropriate, so out of line. And I am, you know. Trying to stay calm, I'm fur furious and really don't know how to go about the situation. So anyway, later on, following um, him flirting all night with my friend, um, I go and I take a shower, and he comes in and we have sex. Mm -hmm. And now at the time First I'm pregnant, time. and after that I go for a walk and I come back and come to find out he tries to go and have sex with her. Now who in their right mind would do that? to your woman, and she's pregnant, and you just finished having sex Second, with me. Mr. Sanchez, did that occur? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. I, I definitely did that. Can you explain that? Well, what happened was that what she left out was that this is actually the same person or the same woman that she was flirting with when we had originally moved in together mm -hmm. after the month's time. We're gonna call so her this is, Suzy Q. Suzy Q moved this in. This is Suzy so Q here's from Suzy the Q. very beginning. Here's Suzy Q right back into our lives again, and... It was, it was definitely an uncomfortable situation for both of us. Um, it was a necessity to help a friend out. The, the history led to the cause, you know what I mean? It's really just as if... That's no excuse, Your Honor. I, well, I don't even understand it. The history led to the cause. Because... Did you have a sexual history with Suzy Q? Partly. And you had a sexual history with Suzy Q that began while she was seeing Suzy Q? Partly. And when you moved in, you were having back sex with both Ms. Alexander and Susie Q. No. Um, he attempted to, Your Honor. Well, see, yeah, and I, she refused him. That's no, what happened. No, that was the second time. The first time she came to me and she approved it. When we first she moved in with anything it, like When we that, first Your moved Honor. in with one another, she did. The girl said she was interested in having sex with me. And she asked her and she said, 
yes. And she got upset with me because I said yes. Did you tell her yes to make, uh, in an effort to make sure he'd say no? To and see if he would say no? I, guess I mean, did, did, he, yes, did you bet it? like that. And in a sense, I, uh, she approached it to me because of him so being so good looking. I didn't agree to it. However, when she brought it up, I said, oh, okay, well, I'm gonna sit back and play, play the field and see how this goes. I don't know this man. Ooh. <laughs> Listen, people. So that's why I said the history made it so that as soon as we came I back to the I don't think it's scenario. a history problem. I think it's a moral problem. I think it's a problem <laughs> that stems from not understanding what sex is, not understanding what a relationship is. You're moving in a guy, you're sleeping with this woman, this woman says she wants to sleep with that guy, you say, uh-huh, okay, then you get mad when he does it. I mean, it's... You're setting up a situation that can't work out. Sex is a part of a meaningful relationship. If you're just gonna do it as a round-robin game, you know, don't, don't, don't have kids, at least. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court. Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. So, Mr. Sanchez, I'm not quite sure what exactly is your status at this point with Ms. Alexander. Um, Are you leaving her and the kids? I don't want to. I don't particularly want to, but yet at the same time, having an eye on a moral standpoint, to go back, we don't believe that staying together for the sake of the children would be any better. Mm -hmm. We would both sit here in misery, and since misery loves company, we wouldn't go anywhere. We'd just right. in each other's face with company be miserable. And they'll see that as gonna just be a chain reaction. At this point, I just simply wanna make sure that, it, with the advice of you, whether or not we can move forward, whether or not these are simply issues we can get past. You know what I mean? I recently bought her a ring just for sentimental value. Um, it wasn't a lot of money for the ring, you know what I mean? Um, but she turned around and, and felt that it was a necessity to pawn How the ring. How long ago did you buy the ring? March 23rd of this okay. year. Okay. And was it an engagement ring? That was the premise behind it. Uh, that was the premise behind it. Yeah, See, to be an engagement ring. Like Have that? you ever just said yes or no in your entire life? No. Yes, uh -huh. Either it was an engagement no. ring or it was an engagement yes, ring. It was it, an yes, engagement it was ring. an engagement yes, ring. Yes, it was you an engagement were... ring. And the engagement ring, because of his behaviors and actions that he takes with not being consistent with our money management, um, spending the money wisely, I had to pawn that ring. Mm -hmm. That gotcha. ring. I got you. And you want the money for the ring back, which I'm not going to give you, but I am going to give you a bucket load of advice. The first thing is, quit moving people in with you. That never works out. Never, ever, 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 ever works out. That's too many hormones and too small of a space with too little things to contain you, especially since you have, you have amorphous values. You know, you, you, you don't, this is what I do, this is what I don't do. Some people are very rigid like that. No, Y'all just like a puff of smoke. Ooh, there's somebody over here, let me do this. Ooh, there's somebody over there, let me do that. <laughs> if you have puff of smoke value, you can't be in a, in a milieu where there's other people like that. That's, that's number one. Number two, never move anybody in when you got kids. You don't know what they're up to. You don't know what the people they know who they bring over are up to. You, get, you got to keep your house stable and secure. Don't, you, don't, you don't want it like Grand Central Station with people coming in and out and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and then what you have to do is not just kind of slide into a relationship. You can't just kind of fall into a, to a commitment. You got to make one. You got to say, hey, you my man. This is what I expect. This is what I want. This is where I'm headed. This is how we're going to raise our children. This is how we're going to deal with our money. This is how we're going to run our lives. We're going to be adults about this. We're going to make decisions. We're going to let, we're going to run our lives, let our lives run us. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's what yes, you two Honor. need to do. I can't help you until you two decide to grow up. Yes, Your Honor. And then once you decide to grow up, which I would recommend since you already have children, then you can make an accurate decision as to whether or not you want to stay or to go. But in the meantime, in between time, <laughs> make no more babies until you can make a mature decision about what's up with the two of you. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so ordered. Kevin and Adam appreciate the judge's ruling and are working to provide a stable and secure home for their children. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.